What's going on guys and welcome to round number three of my BBL series with the Brisbane Heat. Here today we are back as I said once again. We're currently 2-0, and we're taking on the Renegades who are 1-1, one and one. they'll be looking for their second win. We'll be looking to head out and stay in the lead. You'd have to say a win here today will go very close to our top four aspirations and keeping us inside the top four. But without any further ado, if you like this video, drop a like on it, give it a thumbs up if you are new, please do subscribe. Let's go and get into game number three. I think this is possibly our first away game of the season as well. Alright, so we're here today at a beautiful MCG. The logos seem to have fixed themselves as well uh, since doing my last recording. And I'm trying to remember where I sat at the G when I was playing. This is the Melbourne Renegade side. We have gone unchanged. But Finch, Cooper, White, uh, Hodge, Bravo, Nabi, Pattinson, Holland, Richardson and Brad Hogg. So they've gone quite spin friendly, uh, which I think is what the Renegades will do uh, come the BBL when they do play. Remember, I am recording this uh, in advance. We do have the toss. Vinci looking good. He's got the coin. He's going to flip it here uh, with BMAC having the call. Now, I have put the difficulty up as well for those who are wondering. The Heat have won the toss. We're going to have a bowl first here. Um, so I'm hoping that it is probably a little bit harder because our first two games have been quite easy um, and quite convincing. I think we won the first one by five wickets uh, with about 2.5 overs left to go. And the last game, I think, we possibly lost Chris Lynn, uh, but... I think we, we still won it with about five balls left to go. So it was quite convincing. Ben Cutting has had a very good tournament to date so far here. Two matches, uh, the three wickets he has had. And we've already got fielders out on the boundary. This actually looks, it feels like we're playing at the Docklands. Because this here has got, it feels like that the roof uh, has come over. And that there is going to be a good ball, to be fair. So good start there from Ben Cutting. Um, and Finchie, you don't, to be fair, really want to be leaving uh, those ones. And he has actually found, oh, you have got to be kidding me, the edge, just second ball, uh, moving it. I think we we're moving it away, to be fair. Um, and Finch has gone for a duck. He had had a pretty good tournament so far, 30 runs uh, in the first two games. Matty Renshaw picking up a catch in the slips as well. Ben Cutting, as I said, continues on his very impressive tournament um, with his fourth wicket in his third game. Uh, in now comes Cammy White, um, and he'll be looking to try and go and make some runs because the Renegades won for none already. Uh, and that is more what they needed. Finchie, where was that from you, bud? The flick over... Finally, Cam White gets off the mark with a big six, and that is very nice to see, to be fair. And I need to actually go and tr basically stop talking uh, so that we can actually go and try and short this video so it isn't incredibly, incredibly long. I'm just going to try and mix it up a little bit here today. Uh, bring in, in uh, bleh, what am I saying? Uh, bringing in Yasser Shah earlier on in the piece because he has been pumped. Uh, in the last couple of games. So I'm hoping bringing him on early when the batsmen aren't quite as set uh, will allow him to, I guess, just try and build some pressure, not get tapped around, uh, obviously, like we have seen in the last couple of games. He has been very, very expensive. Uh, it also means that we can use Josh Layla towards the end of the innings as well because he was quite good for me there, uh, whereas coming in and opening up with a new ball, he has been pumped as well. Oh, nice shot that there from Tommy Cooper. We've just put it a little bit wider, uh, which, to be fair, probably isn't the best of ideas considering our field and cover is out on the league side. Oh, the switchy. The switchy from Tommy Cooper. What a tournament he is having so far. He would be rivaling Bears and Lynn for the top run score at the moment, it must be said. Um, he picks up... We'll watch the replay of this because it's nice. I love watching replays of switch hits. Beautiful connection. Well, don't want to say beautiful connection, but got well up over the fielders and picked himself up four runs. Whew! That has gone straight through Cam Gannon's hand, down the ground by Tommy Cooper. He is putting on an absolute show here today. He's moved on to 17 of just eight deliveries. Oh, and he's gone again. There is a man out there, but it doesn't matter. It's cleared him by a good 10 metres. Um, and I think that is Stickerty on the fence. He's just stood there, watched it go over him. Ten coming off the first two balls of Gannon's over. He's going to have to try and uh, pull this back here, you would have to say. Uh, and he's done that with a dot ball. 
Oh, there we go. There we go. That is what we needed. Tommy Cooper was starting to look very, very good. 23 off 11. Strike rate of 209 with three fours uh, and the one six. And that is a big wicket. It was definitely needed in the context of this game. Oh, we've found the edge next ball and it's Brad Hodge as well. That's a big wicket, a huge wicket for Cam Gannon. And uh, all of a sudden he is on a hat trick. Just a stock standard ball, that one. Uh, and bowling. Just seems to be going very, very well for us at the moment. Hattrick ball. Dwayne Bravo, the overseas pro, is facing it. And he has just nudged it down the ground for no run. Oh, what a shot that is. Slower ball from Joshy Layla. I must say, he's doing a hell of a lot better coming in now uh, than he does normally earlier on in the innings. He's only gone for six, and he's got one ball left to go and is over. Oh, Bravo with a bit of Caribbean flair. Has put that up 101 metres into the seats. That's a crowd catch if I've ever seen one. Oh, and again. Again, that's where my cover is. I'm trying to bowl it just on the pads. Just short of a good length so we can try and nudge it to that man at uh, a deep square leg. But I think we're going to possibly have to change the tactic here. Because we're just starting to get pumped. Alright, here we go. Last ball of the inning. So Renegades 3 for 53 at the moment. So a very good start for them. And uh, they're going to pick up four more with a very cheeky edge that goes between the slip Renshaw and the keeper. I'm trying to remember who. Jimmy Pearson. There we go. I forgot who my keeper was uh, there for a second. Very expensive over from Stickety after how good he was in the last game. He'll be disappointed with that. Uh, so 58 is the total that we are going to be chasing. Um, and good contributions all around from Cooper, uh, Cam White, and Bravo. Obviously, Hodge uh, out court by the wicketkeeper. We did get a catch by Renshaw in the slips and Gannon went straight through Tommy Cooper. So they were good. Yes, Shah, expensive again. I'm not really too sure what I'm going to do with him there. Um, if I can possibly bring him out of the side and bring someone else in, um, that might possibly have to be the case. Gannon with the two wickets. Stekety none for 19. He was expensive. Uh, so we're chasing 58. Our biggest total so far. Let's see if the Bash Bros can go and do it. We just had to do that. The pressure is building. I'm trying to play it through the field, and I just can't do it. We're just hitting it to fielders. I was actually almost run out of that last ball. I was lucky that Lynn uh, was quick enough, but there is the first four of the innings. Oh, there we go. Through the offside this time. The timing's not great. It seems to be a pretty quick outfield here at the G today, though. It's flicked back. And uh, it's a good throw, but that is Chris Lynn. Great running. And they come back and run four. Oh, that's, yep, just eluded the fielder. Might not have the timing uh, to get to the rope, but flicked over the top by McCullum. Uh, he'll grab himself two. That's the first shot of any, I guess, anger that he has played. Oh, there we go. That's better. Good shot, Baz. Through the covers, along the ground. Grabs himself his first four of the innings. And uh, we are keeping up with this required run rate at the moment. Oh, there we go from Baz on the pads. Flicked away. There's going to be his first maximum of the game here today. I think that's possibly his fifth or sixth, sixth of the tournament. And we're only in game number three. So he is going along looking for double figures. And you wouldn't bet against him getting there. Oh, what a shot that is. Just using the pace of Richardson. It wasn't that fast. The timing is pretty much there. And uh, once again, we're going to scamper back. Run four. So that's good running and good communication between these two players. Oh, my God. Why do I always do that? I try and run it fine off the spinners. We absolutely, I mean, don't get me wrong. Great catch by Cam White. We've absolutely creamed that. But why we're hitting it there in the first place, I don't know. And we've got to try and get that shot out of our head because Chris Lynn is gone. 9 off 4 with the two fours here today. Oh, B Mac, how have you done that through the keeper? It's a much needed boundary, don't get me wrong. But man, oh man, talk about high risk. Alright, so it's going to be Dwayne Bravo to bowl the final over here. We need 23 off the last. We have just really struggled. John Holland and Brad Hogg came in, and we just could not hit them uh, for some reason. So you'd have to say the pressure now 
uh, is on the Brisbane Heat. And it is not going to make it any easier with that wicket there. Uh, Burns gone first ball, just looking to try and go up over the top, which is probably needed at this stage, to be fair. Um, we've got Matty Renshaw coming in, having his first bat of the tournament. You'd have to say a lot here now lies on Brendan McCullum's shoulders. You'd have to think uh, that he is probably the guy to try and see them home. And uh, dot balls like that are not going to help. I don't really know what I was trying to do. Just go up over the top of the slips and the keeper but now requiring 23 of just four we need sixes here uh, otherwise we are going to be dead and buried that one there I don't think is going to have the legs to go and get up so it's looking as though the Brisbane Heat are going to pick up their first loss of the season uh, unless we well actually technically here we could hit three sixes and tie I don't know if we go to a super over or a count back or what the dealio is um, but, I mean, it's still on. I, I shouldn't have counted ourselves out. McCullum is still there. He's still hitting. He just needs another two sixes off these last two balls, and we are back in with a chance. They have now put a fielder back, I guess, on that little flick off the pads, if required. That one there has gone up. Has it got enough? No, it's one bounce four, uh, and that is going to be the game dead and buried, uh, unless there is a no ball that is bowled here uh, by Dwayne Bravo. McCullum currently on 38. You wouldn't bet against him scoring a 50 in this format at some time or another, but that one there has been driven down the ground. It's enough for four. It's not enough to see the Brisbane Heat win, however. They go down, I believe, by five runs, uh, and that does see the Renegades move to two and one as well. Win by four, were, uh, four runs sorry. Uh, McCullum still getting himself the man of the match. It was almost a one-man uh, wrecking show, to be fair, with his 42 not out of 22. But as you can see there, John Holland, one for two, and Brad Hogg, none for six. Between those two guys, one for eight off their two overs, and that is what ultimately cost us the game. We just could not, just couldn't get them away, whatever we tried to do. And I didn't want to take the risk because you know, the run rate was still in check, but we just really left too much to do um, in the last over. McCullum tried his best, couldn't go and get the job done. He actually faced 22 of the 30 deliveries, so um, he did his best. His best, however, wasn't enough. The Heat lose their first game. The Renegades move to 2-1, and one, move to the same record as us. We'll go and check out how the other results went in just a moment. All right, so this is how things look after three rounds of play. The middle of the table is really heating up with four teams occupying two to five uh, with the same record of two and one. The Scorchers and the Thunder still are without a win. That is many thanks to the Hurricanes who beat the Thunder uh, by 14 runs. And as we can see, Timmy Payne, 33. Benny McDermott, 16 not out. So those two scoring bulk of the runs. Pat Cummings with the only wicket for the Thunder. And in reply, falling 14 runs short, three wickets down. There must have been a few runouts in there, to be fair. Yeah, two runouts because Clive Rose, the only guy going and getting a wicket. So the Hurricanes stay unbeaten. The Thunder still without a win. Obviously we saw what happened in our game. The Strikers had another win. The Stars are languishing down towards those two teams yet to get a win. Uh, they've done it by, well, to be fair, uh, Travis Head, 39 not out of 15. Colin Ingram, 22 not out of 15. He's carrying on his good form. Kevin Peterson's been very good in this tournament as well. 37 not out of 23 deliveries. And Bobby Quiney, 12 of 4. Not enough to see the side home. Peter Siddle with the only wicket again Against uh, the Stars with 1 for 10. Rashid Khan, very good as well. None for 3. You could almost give the man of the match award to him for bowling such an economical over. And finally, the Sixers, who we played in round 1, they travelled over to the Wacker to take on the Scorchers. The Scorchers setting a very good total of uh, 1 for 58 with Sam Whiteman, 31 not out of 10, and Michael Klinger, 19 of 15. Sean Abbott grabbing the wicket there, and Steve O'Keefe, very economical. The Sixers getting there with an over left to go, and we do have our first 50 of the tournament as well that has gone to Jason Roy off just 19 deliveries, 1 for 61. Hilton Cartwright picked him up. He was very expensive, though, with 1 for 22. So anyway, guys, that is round 3 done and dusted. If you have enjoyed it, remember to drop a like on this video. Give it a thumbs up. If you are new, please do subscribe. And until next time, Kaki Tanoa. See you soon.